Welcome to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm your host, Jessica Krauser, and I'm with my co-host, Brian Baker. Hello. And today we have a special, very special guest with us all the way from Australia. We have Dr. Wayne Markman, who is the CEO of Sim... Did I say it right? Symbix? Sim... Symbix, exactly Simbix. right. Okay, good. Um, so, welcome. Good, good day, guys. Good day, mates. Thank you. Can we say that back to you? I don't know if I would do as good of a job. You can. <laughs> it's, it's G apostrophe D. Good day, mates. Good day, mates. Mate. So, you're probably wondering, who is Dr. Wayne Markman and what is Symbix? Well, Dr. Markman is the CEO of Symbix, and he has a background in medical, healthcare, and business. He has an MBA from Harvard Business School, and he felt that he had a real calling coming into healthcare specifically with biochemistry and neurology. Symbix, the product he's going to talk about, is a light laser therapy. You may be wondering, what is light laser therapy and how can it help Parkinson's? Well, that's what we are going to get into. What is light? I mean, light, you know, light therapy has been around since 1902. We started treating babies with jaundice oh. and the light. Yeah, so that's light medicine. Yeah. We just, we figured out, some smart scientist somewhere figured out that that was effective in reducing bilirubin in the baby's system, overactive, which caused that discoloring, the, the, the yellowing mm -hmm. of the skin. Go forward, um, 10, 15 years ago, another really smart scientist found that infrared light is really effective at treating lymphedema. And lymphedema is, you know, you, you unfortunate uh, cancer patient has a mastectomy and they have a removal of the breast, a breast, two breasts. They have swelling because the doctors have also removed their lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And the lymph nodes is effectively a plumbing, a drainage system of inflammation, debris, extrastitial fluid. Mm -hmm. Laser light is really effective in reducing swelling. So... It flushes the system out at a certain wavelength. And then the, the most important application of light, which is practiced by billions of people every day around the world, is going out in the sunlight because it helps with mood, cognition, circadian rhythm, which governs your sleep pattern. Mm -hmm. so, so light is not new. I, I want to debunk the first myth. Light therapy is, is as old as the heels. It's safe, it is non-invasive, it is benign, but it's really effective at the right wavelength. So, in the case of Parkinson's, one of the key issues with a person with Parkinson's is that they have a mitochondrial dysfunction. What is that? In a cell, you've got the nucleus, the middle the, the, of the egg, the, the mm -hmm. orange bit. Mm -hmm. That's where the DNA is, right? That determines your gender, your height, uh, and everything. Okay. In the white bit, you have lots of different things that protect the cell, allow it to replicate, kill it if it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. We can tap into that white bit, especially this one little area called the mitochondria, and we can recharge it. And the energy we can give it through the light repairs the cell. So now we know what light is, but what makes the light really effective? I mean, there are a lot of things that have light or lasers. So what makes this so special? The key to the light, the, the gold nugget is the wavelength. Okay. And that's the distance between the beginning of the wave and when it starts to repeat. So if you look at the rainbow, that's the visible light spectrum. You can see red mm -hmm. all the way to violet. Okay. okay. Beyond violet, which are short wavelengths, very short, mm -hmm. you've got X-rays, you have gamma rays. You have rays that change cell DNA and in extreme exposure situations cause cancer. Okay. So that's why you, you wear protective clothing when you go and have an x-ray. Right. Because that changes your cell DNA. Not good. There's good and there's not good. That's not good. Hmm. We are treating at the red and infrared end of the, of the rainbow where the waves are much longer. They don't change cell DNA. So you cannot harm someone. They're safe. So now we know a little bit about wavelengths and that it needs to be long, but what does it do? How does it work? Let's listen in. Beyond infrared, you, you cannot see infrared with your naked eye. Mm -hmm. An insect could. Insects are much smarter than us. They could. Um, you have TV waves, 
phone waves, microwaves. cell waves. No, microwaves are on the dangerous end. Okay. Those are the really short ones. That's why you shouldn't put your head in a microwave and turn oh, it on. You'll cook okay. yourself. <laughs> um, and you have radio waves. Uh -huh. That's where we're treating. So that's how a, a wave of light works. If you take a laser, okay, a little bit oh. of propaganda marketing here. If you take the Symbix laser and you turn it on, uh -huh. okay, you cannot see any light because okay. it's infrared. But if you looked through an infrared lens, you could see two beams coming out. Mm -hmm. So that's a really safe wavelength. You cannot see it. You cannot hurt yourself. You cannot damage your eye. You don't need protective glasses. If you shine that on your skin, that has a beneficial health effect on all of our cells in the body, in particular cells that are stressed out and unhealthy, sick cells. So you might be wondering at this point, where do you point it and what does it do for you? The light taps into the nervous system, which is why part of the Symbix protocol is to put it on the back of the neck, round about the level of the, uh, the brainstem. And that stimulates the nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain, the spinal cord. So what we're doing is we're switching it on and we're reinforcing the connection between the brain and the gut. We'll get to the gut brain axis because we'll address it from the gut up, not the brain down. But part of the protocol is on the neck. The other major part of the protocol is on the stomach, but that's how the light works. Um, so it taps into the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It increases cell uh, uh, energy because the mitochondria produces the energy for the cell. Mm -hmm. It allows the cell to repair itself. It helps with digestion. It helps with brain fog. In many cases, it's reducing the motor deficit. So there is a link between the gut and the brain. It's called the gut-brain axis. It's actually the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the only nerve in the body that travels from your brain to your gut. Okay. We know that 80% of the communication along that vagus nerve is actually from the gut to the brain, not the brain to the gut. So the gut directly influences the brain and it's one of the latest, most powerful concepts in modern medicine. Mm -hmm. It's, to me, the third discovery of the century. Okay? If you influence the gut bacteria... You can influence the signaling that happens in the brain to produce something that increases your motor deficit in Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And that something has to be dopamine because that's the chemical that influences your movement. If you have a lack of it, you have Parkinson's symptoms. If your Parkinson's symptoms improve, it has to be dopamine. And we know we improve Parkinson's symptoms by treating the gut. And we've done that in three clinical trials. We've got four more, three are in Parkinson's, one is inflammatory bowel. So you change your brain neurology through treating your gut with laser light. We wanted to hear more about clinical trials and what the team is doing to learn more about Parkinson's patients across the country. We have several clinical trials completed already. They were all done in Australia. Mm -hmm. They were done in the mid 2000s and they were published in you know, for example, the BMC Neurology Journal in the UK in July of 2021, mm -hmm. uh, a small study was published and it was followed up by another small study. Why small? Because that's what the scientists could afford at that time. Mm -hmm. They cobbled together Parkinson's patients and they tested the technology. So because light is so safe, this light, it doesn't heat up. We've discussed it's at the safe end of the light spectrum. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't change cell DNA. Mm -hmm. The scientists got, and these were Australian scientists, so, you know, well done Aussies. Um, they, they got uh, approval to use this on, on people. Mm -hmm. They ran some clinical trials. They were small trials. Now, the biggest criticism of those trials were that they did not have a placebo arm or a sham group. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't test the laser on someone with Parkinson's with a live laser and versus a fake laser. Okay. Remember, it's infrared. You can't see it. So it's mm -hmm. really easy to use a fake one. You just don't connect the diodes. Mm -hmm. they, they sound the same, right? Beep, 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 beep. That's just the sound. There's no laser light coming out. That's a gold standard. That's called a randomized placebo trial. Mm -hmm. We have three of those for Parkinson's already going. And we have another one for inflammatory bowel disease all using the Simbix laser. Mm -hmm. We know the results are good because we've treated now almost 4,000 patients. And the reaction, the response of the patients is like any typical therapeutic distribution curve. Mm -hmm. so we have followed all of these patients now uh -huh. for three years. 
none of them have regressed. They st they're still using the light therapy? Absolutely. Okay. Unfortunately, once you start, you have to keep going because it's not a cure, it's improving mm -hmm. the symptoms. Okay, so we're starting to get an idea of what laser therapy is like. But for patients like Brian, who recently went through deep brain stimulation or DBS surgery, how does DBS differ from light laser therapy? Let's listen to his response. We're providing a, a light signal. DBS is providing an electrical signal mm. to make the nervous system function more smoothly. All it is doing, the DBS, is it's sending electrical signals because your brain's ability to send those electrical signals is impaired. And it's impaired because the grease that the brain needs to work the engine is in short supply. And that grease is dopamine. Now we know the difference between DBS and light laser therapy. But is this safe to use if I'm already on carbidopa levodopa? Can we use this in combination with our current medication? Or does something have to change? That's the question we ask next to Wayne. So we're seeing improvements in people that are pre-medication. There, there is a group of people out there, and I'm not advocating anyone stops their medication. Mm -hmm. I think that's irresponsible. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, you deal with your, your prescribing physician and you discuss your progress with them. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is that this therapy is safe to use with medication mm -hmm. and without medication. And you do not want to introduce two variables. If you start the laser and you're on medication, you don't stop your medication. Mm -hmm. And that's that would be irresponsible. This works with the levodopa. And the cool thing about this laser is that it's actually changing the bacteria in your gut. And what the challenge in front of scientists is, how can we change the bacteria to reduce the, 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 the strain of bacteria that eats the levodopa and causes it to become active in the gut mm -hmm. so that more of it goes to your brain? Well, it might be happening already, mm -hmm. but we don't know. We can't prove it yet. So the big question here, do you use it all day long, every day? How often would we need to use it? Brian gets into this detail. Um, I'm really interested to see like, how, you know, how often you have to use it, like how long you have to hang on to use, you know, turn it on and have mm -hmm. things, yeah. you know, those, those types cool. of things. Cool. Yeah, I understand. Great question. Because now we get to the clinical trials and the therapeutic effect and dose response. So what's the right amount of energy, how many times a week to affect the health, desired health outcome, right? Because anyone can whack a light on them, but that's not going to have any effect. The optimal dose yielded the best health mm -hmm. outcome. And that optimal dose was about 60 to 70 joules of therapy in a session three times a week. So our patients are on a pretty uh, uh, well-defined program where they use this laser three days with a day rest in between more is not more more is less more is less effective and we often have people say hey mm -hmm. i'm just not happy with the results we go what's your protocol well you know i'm so keen i use it three times a day seven days a week well yeah okay so you've just wasted your time and a lot of battery power so i'm sure everyone's question now at this point is is it available in the u.s is it fda approved we are working with the fda to clear mm -hmm. these devices in the u.s right but we have a scientific team and we have an awesome customer service team, all of whom are clinicians. So they know, they understand the neuroscience, they understand patient management, and they understand how to speak to patients who have had no good news for a long time. This is the first good news. We can direct your listeners to similar devices, similar technology, so that they can get started. There's no reason to wait. So one of my last questions to Wayne was, I know some Parkinson's patients who have ordered light therapy devices from websites like Amazon that may be $100 or less. So how is this really different? How should we look at the competition, the light therapies we find online at Amazon versus products that have a clinical background like Symbix? He has a great response to this question. So you, 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 you get what you pay for most of the time. Yeah, a good walk on the beach and a beautiful sunny day is priceless and it costs nothing. I, I get that. But you get what you pay for, okay? In a, in a cheap and nasty, um, or I should say nasty in America, in a cheap and nasty uh, eBay piece of, of electronics that cost 20 bucks and they sell for 150 bucks, you're getting exactly that. You're getting LED LED light, not okay. laser light. 
to begin with. LED is scattered light. You don't have parallel wavelengths of light. It fires light everywhere. The vast majority of that light bounces directly off the skin and is useless. And what- okay? You all is useless. It doesn't have any therapeutic effect. Most of it is not even penetrating the skin. Laser light from a medical diode that is regulated, approved by the regulator, made by a medical laser manufacturer, will penetrate your skin for up to six or seven centimeters because it's coherent light, it's Mm -hmm. parallel, it penetrates skin, and it's absorbed by target cells. Our mission here is to reduce suffering from Parkinson's globally. That's our mission. And that's why we started this business. And the light encourages the bacteria to produce the chemicals that does that. I like to close all of our episodes out with a 30 second recap. So here it is, bear with me. The gut brain connection, it is real. Uh, The brain and your GI are intimately connected. So everything we put in our body will have a direct effect on our brain, which is a complex organ that controls every process within our body. So take care of it. Take care of your brain, take care of your gut. And as always, like I said, please consult with your doctor before you make any changes to your diet, exercise, or medication regimen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Pleasure.